Oh my gosh. What is Grandpa Kelsey's name? We never met him. Was it not Theodore? Is it Theodore? Was it Michael? It might have been Michael. Damn, we should know this, man. I know. This is embarrassing. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's your dad's name? Oh, Willis. Willis. Man, we are way off. How the f*** did we forget Willis? Welcome back to New Heights, presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. Hell! Brought to you by the all-new Experience Smart Money debit card. <laughs> That's right, folks. The debit card that can build credit without the debt. Imagine mm. that. We are your hosts. I'm Travis Kelsey. This is my big brother, Jason Kelsey, out of Cleveland Heights, Ohio. University of Cincinnati alum, baby. Go Bearcats. And a New Heights episode actually drops every Wednesday during the NFL season. That is true. Subscribe on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast, and follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S. Please. As you know, 92 percenters, Jason's going to tell you what we got coming up next. We got a fantastic episode, Trav. We're going to touch on everything that's been happening in the world of football, as well as get into how we spent our bye weeks. That's all right, right including me getting roasted at a place called the Wiener Circle. What? Travis. Allegedly uh, being out of the country, though you can never tell uh, with AI these days who's never know, where folks. and what's where. It's crazy what it come out these days. And then, of course, we're going to talk about the biggest storylines that have happened across the NFL in week 10. Whew. But first, before we get to any of that, we're always going to hit to a little bit of that. New news. New news. Hey. Coming in hot. That's right, baby. Family reunion game watch party at beat ups. <laughs> we got some more details for our family reunion game, our family reunion game event that's taking place in Philadelphia. Yeah, buddy. We're officially partnering with our friends at beat ups. That's right. Buffalo Wild Wings and the 92 percenters can ha- are having a watch party on Monday, November 20th. I think that's the day of the game. From yeah, that that's Monday. Yep. Night football. They're watching the game, Jason. Okay. At B dubs, which there we go. You know this, and but, he gets it. <laughs> but they have some great wings at B dubs. Like we said last week, uh, the watch party will be in the Philly area for all our Philly based 92 percenters who can't make the trip to the Kansas City area. Uh, you have to be 21 and over to attend. Got to be 21, kids. Got to be 21 and over. Or have a really good fake ID. Whichever one you have will probably get you into the event. Did, did, did you have a fake ID growing up, Jason? I did have a fake ID in college. You did? Oh, yeah. It was my buddy I Alex had. Hamo's older brother, who was 26, and it had been expired for two years. And it nice. worked like a charm. Never got denied. It didn't look anything like me. <laughs> <laughs> I used yours for a little bit. You used my ID. Yeah, I stole That's your a good ID. one because you knew all the information. I, I will say I did get caught once with Alex Hamo's brother's ID when they asked me what uh, street it was on the license, and I had no idea. <laughs> you got to this guy. He's not very good at flanking, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no. The one thing you got to know is the info that's on the well, car. After that one, I just had never been asked it. that before. I'd never been asked. Clear as day, not a flanker. A very limited number of tickets are going to be available for purchase starting. Tomorrow, that's Thursday, Thursday, November 16th, please follow New Heights on all social media for the exact time in which those tickets will go for sale. All other important information for the event will be available when you purchase the ticket. And we're also going to give away three pairs of tickets exclusively on our Club 92 website. So if you haven't already signed up, head to newheightsshow.com and uh, click on the tab that says Join Club 92. How about that? The two of us obviously won't be at B-dubs since we're mm. going to be playing football that day. That's the goal, at least, yeah. Knock on wood. But there will be two celebrities in attendance. That's right. Our cute-ass intern, Brandon, is going to be <laughs> available. And uh, Jets Jake. That's well, right. We're going to have a Jets fan in there. You're in treat, ladies and gentlemen. You are in yeah. treat. You are in for a doozy. <laughs> uh, but there will be giveaways, a raffle uh, for some signed items, and, of course, a drinking game with the uh, New Heights themed. Drinking a drinking game. game. Yeah. What should the, uh, what the what should we have for, as the drinking game? What would it be? What are some things people drink from? Like if you see uh, Mama Kels on the, uh, on, the, on the broadcast at some point or you get a reference of Mama Kels, got a drink. What are you drinking? Are you drinking what's ever in your hand or you, you got to get like a drink of something in honor of Mama Kels? Mm, no, just drink in hand. Just drink in hand? Yeah, just drink in hand. What would right, mom's yeah. drink of choice be, though? I feel like she's like a Riesling. I don't know why. 
sounds like a yeah white wine or something like that. I'm with you. Yeah, right. Chug whenever they mention the podcast. I think that's so. pretty good. New Heights podcast. We get is a it, shout is out. Is it a chug for however long they're mentioning it, or is it like a chug like you got to finish your beer? Or is it like uh, a just waterfall, chug like, for until they yeah. stop talking about it and then you put your beer down. I like that. You, I think you just yeah. I think you just nailed it. Whenever if Travis Kelsey throws or kicks a ball into the stands, you should have to finish your beer or whatever your drink is. Fuck yeah. I'm in on right? that. You're in Hopefully on that? I fucking th- I'll throw I, every f- I'll catch a first down and throw that fucker in the stands. Fuck no, it. no, no. Only, well, I guess, it, <laughs> dude, that would be electric. You just, just start every throwing catch. The- Travis is throwing his fifth ball into the stands <laughs> today. And the Chiefs are down to two footballs, both special teams footballs. <laughs> they are running out of them. The equipment managers are panicking on the sideline. <laughs> you can see him here actually screaming into the audience trying to get a football back. Just throw kicking balls into the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just fight now. Yeah, well, <laughs> we might need Harry to win us another one. Uh, take a shot whenever uh, Jason and I are shown on the split screen. Nice little, got to order okay, a shot. Okay. I'll uh, leave that up to intern Brandon and Jets Jake to order shots for everybody because it's going to be, if everyone's going to be in there, you know, abiding by the drinking rules of the drinking game that's gonna be everybody in that thing gets a shot so that's on you brandon and what else do we got what else we got on there jason Any- uh oh yeah anytime jason's shown on the screen you have to immediately start chugging until they stop talking about him if the chain gang comes out you have to chug until the chain gang is back off of the field Oh, it's like measure the measure yeah. the first down marker. Yeah, right. if they have to come out on the field, you have to start drinking your beer until they come off of the field. That could be that's a long chug. That's a long. Maybe chug. it's only from the moment they put the stick down to measure how long the football is. From what do you think? Not for it. Fin- yeah, no, I'm I just like involved in the chain gang. Yeah, chain gang. I just like saying the word chain gang. I just love that Ed Kelsey was the chain gang at Heights. Ooh, I was on the chain gang a little bit. I would have been cheating all day. That's why I can't be the chain gang. Honest Ed. <laughs> anytime there's a uh what is it the um brotherly shove anytime a brotherly shove happens chug take a drink take a drink chug until the end of the play again tickets will be available tomorrow thursday november 16th uh for anybody wanting to go to the family reunion uh b-dubs watch party out in uh, philadelphia please check out uh join club 92 on uh new heights show.com uh to see if you can win some free tickets Mm. Until then, we keep this thing moving. Sexy hey. Batman named Sexiest Man Alive. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. That's me. You fucking sex symbol, you. Oh, oh man. Who show, knew? Huh? Kylie, Kylie had here. it right the whole time. Don't you, you bring that out. It's a fucking yeti out there. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I forgot it's Kid Show, Kid Show, Kid Show, Kid Show. Kid Show. <laughs> you just, that just went in the swear jar right there. Um <laughs> What happened to the swear jar? Are we doing the swear jar? No, we're not doing the swear jar. Why? I don't know. I didn't like it. I'll, how about I'll put up the cash. If nobody else wants to put up the cash, I'll put up the cash. Yeah, are you in on it then? If you're, if you're this sounds I like think you're it's doing a great it. idea. We'll figure it out. We've been figuring it out, Brandon. We're all, who isn't figuring it out? We're all just life. It feels like it's pretty we're just life. That's a verb. We're just out here life. Just it feels like it's pretty standard. It I did figure out that you can give walk-on scholarships now, though, which is crazy. You were a walk-on that got a scholarship. What are you talking about? No, no, no. I'm saying they can be a walk-on and get NIL deals that pay for their college tuition. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. Yeah, but then, like, what's the point of, like, why, why are any of these kids walk-ons? Why aren't we getting these kids? Well, technically, that's how it works. It's just funded through the school. But you, like, you're only supposed to get a certain amount of scholarship players. This is like a loophole. Well, yeah. And now all be, of a sudden, you yeah. can have like a hundred kids on scholarship. Oh, man. You think this is new, Jason? This is how they fucking. This is how they. This is how they've been well, doing this it. This is definitely new. This is how they've been NIL's, doing it in the SEC. Yeah, this is new since the NIL stuff, right? Because before you couldn't do that. I don't know. They've been fudging this. They've been flanking this whole time. All right, let's get back to the sexiest man alive. All right, we're not going to fucking start to get it away from this, Jason. Um, you were People Magazine's finalist for sexiest man alive. And um, unfortunately, would you come in like second? According to people, but if you ask Twitter, I was first. Well, the other individuals that made the final list, Pedro Pascal. I'm way sexier than him. Usher. Usher was sexy in the in the early 2000s. Timothy Shalala. And uh, Jamie Fox. I mean, Jamie Fox is pretty sexy. I'm not gonna lie. And Lenny Kravitz, you beat Jamie Fox. I don't can't can't really tell if you beat him or not. But you were up there. You're up there with Jamie Fox and Lenny Kravitz and Usher and 
Timothy? When I think of Lenny Kravitz, I'm like, that guy's a pretty sexy guy. Like, I think Timothy just did SNL. It was pretty fucking funny. Timothy's not my style. I mean, I guess if you're in the <laughs> little not skinny my white style. guys. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> if you're... <laughs> <laughs> Just being honest. God does nothing no, for me. No, <laughs> I feel like he only got it because his name is Chalamet. Like, that's a sexy name. Uh, you're right. Timothy He's got the Chalamet. Name going but then him. when you look at him, it's like, eh, it's, you know, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> Just being honest. There's not as much sexy. It's like, it's, oh, it's cute. Pull up a picture of Chalamet so Travis can know who we're talking about. I know exactly who we're talking about. I just saw him host Saturday Night Live. What was your reaction to finding out you were one of the people's sexiest men alive? I don't know, Travis. I no, saw you do. It. No, I already knew I was up for it. So there wasn't a reaction. Like they called me and they, they called and you they, and told yeah. you you're the sexiest man alive. They well, initially you were supposed to be up there with me, but you declined it. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. How do you decline it? I don't know, but apparently you guys found a way to decline it. <laughs> How do you fucking decline it? I don't know. Ask People Magazine. I don't know. So they called you and you accepted? I don't know. I think so. <laughs> I didn't get a call. They called me and said it would be me and you. Sexiest men alive? It was about to be both of us? Sexiest brothers alive, yes. Well, that's not the award. I'm just letting you know what I was told. No, you weren't. This is bullshit. Um, more importantly, what was Kylie's reaction? Kylie? Kylie? Uh, she just fucked. She read it and was like, I told you! Like the rest of the world, it was, you know... Just obvious. <laughs> I don't know where you want me to go with this. Did you get like a trophy or like a plaque from People's Magazine? I got nothing. They didn't get you anything? I lost. Oh, you're right. What do you think of this um, nomination? What do I think of it? Yeah, I'm what do you think of it. Jason I'm... Kelsey being the sixth uh, sexiest man in the, alive? Um, I mean, I've been telling, saying it for years. Saying what for years? You're like one of the like the, one of the ugliest people I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. So this actually fucking threw me off, and of threw course, off. like all the other family members, like, oh, there's got to be. They must have just fucking wrote his name in by accident. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. I was fucking. I was proud for you. I was like, nice, sexy Batman, just being a fucking sex symbol out here. Just obviously, the documentary warmed up everyone's hearts and showed your uh, your the true passion you have. And how f you didn't give a fuck about anything else. There's a lot of, uh, I guess, things that I elicit out of women, I think. And I would think sexy is not high on that list. It's obviously higher than you think. Hus husbandly. like uh, Dude, some, some women find that super dad sexy. Dad body-ish. Listen, I mean, listen, all the dad bods out there are ecstatic. With this selection. Unfortunately, it could not win. They had to get their diversity in. See? I they meant had, see. They had, <laughs> they had to get a plus size model yeah. in there. It's like, okay, we got we got this guy, this guy. Okay, we gotta get somebody with some a little bit of body diversity here. We only got ripped, chiseled, or skinny, slender model looking men. <laughs> Who can we find? That might be able to get big. some plus size who's diversity a big, here. Who's a really big sexy man? Who's a big guy that isn't really oh, sexy? Oh, they, they call Jason sexy. sexy Batman. That's right. <laughs> What's sexy Batman looking like? Does he want to be a part of it? Give him a call. See if he's okay with this big joke. Well, congratulations on being one of the sexiest men alive. I did get a t-shirt. I didn't get a trophy, but I got a t-shirt. Shout out to Homage for the t-shirt. Yeah, shout out to Homage. I was going to wear it, but I'm not going to lie, I lost it. God damn it, Jason. All right. Well, let's keep this thing moving. All righty. Kylie's autographed Eagles jacket. That's right. For those of you that don't know, um, the Eagles, and I don't know if this is uh, who is officially making the jacket, but in, in Philadelphia, this jacket is actually known as the Princess Diana jacket because there is an iconic photo of Princess Diana wearing this Kelly Green Eagles jacket. Legendary. Well, the Eagles Autism Foundation is auctioning off um, this jacket that was inspired by Princess Diana, and uh, they decided to use none other than Kylie Kelsey to model it this year. Ooh! And people appreciate it because Princess Kylie, yeah, Princess Kylie, uh, Princess people appreciate Kiana. it. Princess uh, Kiana, Princess Kiana, <laughs> Kiana. It's up to over twenty thousand right now. Matter of fact, at one point, Rob McElhenney, shout out to uh, shout out to Mac, Big Mac. 
Yeah, at one point he had the highest bid at ten thousand uh fifty dollars. Hell yeah, dude. Okay, Rob. Is now up to twenty thousand. Damn. And the auction officially ends November twenty fourth. So there's still time. If you guys want to pay a lot of money for an autographed um Kelly Green, Princess Diana jacket worn by Kylie Kelsey. I think it's autographed by Kylie. Who's it autographed by? Princess Kiana. That's who it's autographed. It's autographed by Princess Kiana. Princess Kiana. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, I think we should get Kylie to sign some more stuff. She needs to. She needs to obviously do more photo shoots and sign more stuff because twenty grand is pretty fucking. I mean, that's a lot of money. I mean, I know that it's kind of a joke that I'm kind of up for sexiest man of the year, but look at that woman. Look at that. Mm. Talk your shit, player. Listen, sexiest woman of the year, right there. Ooh. All day in my book. Mm. We got to get Kylie to sign some more stuff because uh, apparently it's. It's worth a lot. We've been slipping on the value of that <laughs> signature. <laughs> Get Kylie to work. Other news, um, we have uh, our song is officially releasing the day this episode airs. That's right. Ooh, the Christmas album. Yeah. It'll be out on Spotify for all of you wondering what uh, a single uh, sung by Travis Kelsey and I sounds like. Man, I'm going to get just absolutely butchered. Uh, you can go ahead and listen to that. Uh, the the artist is the Philly Specials, but I think if you just search "Fairy Tale of Philadelphia," um, it should pop up. Maybe we can put a link in the video if if it's out on time. Yeah, I'm sure we can do something like that. Be on the lookout for it that. Out. Yeah, check it out. I'm excited for it. I I, I noticed I, everyone in uh, in our office, or at least in the uh, Chiefs' office, is like, "Wait, it, like, are we a part of like Charlie Brown now?" Charlie Brown. And I was like, "What do you mean?" And they looked up as like you guys are using Charlie Brown like cartoons as the like the album art and stuff. The first uh, year when we were trying to figure out the artwork for the album, uh, we wanted it to be like a playful something that was like nostalgic. And I think we all agreed that that Charlie Brown Christmas album is like one of the most iconic visuals behind it. Legendary. legendary and we decided yeah. to make a play on that. Thankful to the um, the group or people that are in charge of that trademark they were nice enough to allow us to use that trademark and produce an album that used that trademark or that uh intellectual property or whatever that is the peanuts man and this year uh, it's it, i mean it's kind of similar it's a little bit different um but it's it's in the same mold for sure so um yeah i mean we wanted it to be playful we wanted it to be more cartoonish than just like an actual picture of ourselves well, I can't wait for everybody to absolutely chop me down and make fun of me for how I sing. This will be fantastic. Dude, Connor's got the... Maybe I'll ask Connor, because Connor turns the comments off on the YouTube. No, 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 no. We got to let the things ride. We got to let the things ride. I'm going to text him right now. We got to... Yeah, we got to have the comments on. At least let our song ride so I can just feel the heat. I'm going to text Connor right now. Everybody can hear me sing like a little church boy. So night <laughs> holy night what? all right now let's keep this thing moving ladies and gentlemen don't forget to check out that album release or at least uh me and jason's song on the 15th ladies and gentlemen and we'll keep this thing moving boom fan mentions of the week all right now let's uh get to our fan mentions of the week this is one of the craziest things we've uh we've now spoken into existence that's right um it's an email from SpaceX, space flight team. I, I still can't believe this is happening. Yeah, no. This is uh, nuts. I just, I hope it doesn't in implode because it sounds like I'm about to go to space. So you're really going to do it? Well, Why, read the, read the dude, thing first. Read the thing. Yeah. First. Hello, I'm Sorry. reaching out from SpaceX. I feel like I have to read this like a fucking sounds, like, first of futuristic. First right away, right away. It's just like scam, it sounds, scam, it's, scam. It sounds like a scam. It sounds like yeah. a scam. Hello, I'm reaching out from SpaceX, super official promise spacex space flight department <laughs> all right good hello i'm reaching out from spacex space flight department why are you reading how should i like read that? i should read it Just like read a robot um <laughs> hello i'm reaching out from spacex from the spacex space flight department we recently saw this article it's an article about me saying i want to go to space and is it possible to, to to discuss space flight with travis or his team you're damn right it's a it's it's possible Person from SpaceX space flight. Oh, it's all, dude. Are you really gonna do this? Fuck. Why wouldn't I go to, dude? I want to go to space. I want to like. I want to see once and for all whether the world is flat or round. Dude, if you can prove to our teammates, to all How do of I the prove people, 
I don't know, take a picture, but then they won't believe that. How yeah. do you prove? Can you FaceTime from from flight? Yeah, but even that can be deterred. They can always make an argument. It's so hard. Is my is my honesty not enough? <laughs> can you turn your location on your phone and then they can see that you are orbiting? <laughs> just going around. Okay, he just went around a circle. I guess he's probably uh, maybe now. maybe we got to get Neil deGrasse Tyson on here to 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 give us pointers on how to prove. Ah, oh, please, Neil. How do we prove the Earth is round? The Earth is round. How do we prove? I know it's already kind of been and proven, not, but not prove to scientists, like prove to like everyday people that don't know a lot of science, like me and Travis. <laughs> like me and Travis. Like I think that you don't throw like a mathematical equation or something like that at us. Leave out the obvious ones, like every other planet, Dude. sun, asteroid. Leave out the fact that everything else in the in the space. Is observably round. Imagine if I went up there and I saw an alien, like an alien just decided to creep over to the, sh- the spaceship. See, like, this is why you shouldn't go into space. If this is what you're going into space expecting, you're not going sweet. to see an alien. Jason. Do we at least know who owns SpaceX? Because last week you said Jeff Bezos. No, you said Jeff Bezos. I said SpaceX. You said Jeff Bezos. I did not say Jeff Bezos. I promise you. You said Bezos. I, no, I did not. Yes, you I did. I promise you, said- you I did not say Bezos. Well, shout out to SpaceX. Jeff Bezos, hit me up if you need somebody to go to space. All right. Well, I know Bezos has a Blue rocket Origin. that goes up to. Blue Origin is, is Bezos, yes. Yeah. So if I said Bezos. You might have said SpaceX, I, Jeff I Bezos, knew. like comma, like one of you two send us up there probably yeah. is what you meant. All right. That's fair. I'll, I'll give you a pass. I'll give you a pass. All right now. Can I get a cyber truck? If Travis gets to go to space, Elon, can I get a cyber truck? Please. No, that's not that I get. If I go to space, I get the Cybertruck. I got to get something cool out of this. We got to go to fucking space. I'm not going to space. I'm I'm, I'm going to. I like being on the ground with my Cybertruck. The fuck are you so scared of? I want a Cybertruck. So it blocks right the bullets that are trying to get in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Test number one on that didn't go too hot. <laughs> We're also apparently influencing governments because the prime minister of Australia. Dude, this is cool. He's fast tracking the citizenship of Jordan Malata. That is right. Uh, and he revealed it on this show. He's not actually a citizen. And uh, it sounds like the prime minister is going to make sure that uh, he gets a citizenship, knowing that he grew up in Australia for forever. What are the limits of new heights? It starts <laughs> off with dipping dots. Now you're going to space and we're making citizens. Dude, I mean, getting people their can't just say dipping dots. I got Butterfingers and Bueno bars and Kit Kats sent to the facility because we were talking, talking it up so much during the Halloween. Nice. There's been a lot of stuff reeling in. And I think I don't know, man. Maybe what's next? What like we can go to space. Ninety two percenters, submit your ideas for what Travis and I need to ask for on this show. I think that's the best way to do it. You know what I need? I need I need new chairs in the Chiefs tight end room. If there is like I need like the Cadillac of like office office chairs. chairs. Yeah. I need like like a lazy boy recliner office chair. You know what I mean? Like (laughs) Something that makes you feel like a fucking boss when you sit yeah. in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you ever I been in like uh, an old Cadillac with like the seats like kind of like nice and worn in? Of course. <sighs> Maybe you just get a bunch of old Cadillac seats, like bench seats, and just Ooh, Caddy, you got some you got some old leather seats that are nice <laughs> nice and worn in? Damn, that'd be fucking I would be. I would I already struggle staying awake if it wasn't for accelerator <laughs> active energy drink i don't know what uh, i do in meetings enjoy space all right now let's get to the next segment that's enough of that uh pandering for free stuff to uh big corporations before we keep going we need to shout out one of our sponsors and it's prize picks that's right prize picks is a skill-based real money daily fantasy sports game and it's the easiest way and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports that man ain't lying and with basketball season now here you can pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues prize picks is really simple to play And you can make your picks and submit your entry in less than 60 seconds. 
Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy app. And now for the portion of this ad read labeled personal experience to be read by talent outside of Travis and Jason Kelsey. Because we are active NFL players and cannot participate, but you know who can? That's right, our cute ass intern, Brandon. Ah, oh, Brandon. Get your cute ass in here, Brandon. How you been doing, Brandon? I'm great. I need to stop. Uh, trolling Jake with Jets picks. I think I've lost enough money, <laughs> an asshole, and I apologize to him profusely. I'll do my picks and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> really quick, we are putting nothing but money on the uh, Chiefs and the Eagles game, the little family reunion. I think after a bye week, I feel pretty good about a Travis touchdown. I feel good about Patrick Mahomes' yards. I mean, I also think Jalen, for a rushing touchdown, is sitting right there. Uh but again, make your own picks. Do what you're going to do. If you really want to tell me my picks suck in person, come to Philly. All right. I'm out of here. Solid whistle. Solid whistle. All right. Now, hopefully uh, B. Rand uh, did some uh, right by you guys. If you want to play some daily fantasy this season, go to prizepicks.com slash new heights. Use the code new heights for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. That's prizepicks.com slash new heights code new heights for daily fantasy sports made easy. There's nothing like watching football at a sports bar and Buffalo Wild Wings is the sports bar for football season. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, they have everything you need on game day. And for game day. Seriously, everything. Everything? They've got to be missing something I need. I need a lot of things, Travis. <laughs> you are a man of very few needs. Don't Can't trick me, Jason. And uh, <laughs> nope, that is the case. I promise you, Jason, I can assure you B-Dubs has it all. If I tell you I need wall-to-wall TVs, yep. crispy, juicy wings, with all oh, 26 definitely. B-Dubs sauces and dry rubs and a great beer selection, yep. you're saying Buffalo Wild Wings has all of these things? I knew you weren't a man of great needs, Jason. That's three things that <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings has. That's exactly what I'm saying. Plus, in addition to having all that, it's fun to watch the games at B-Dubs in a sports bar with your buddies. Even making some new friends when yep. you bond with uh, strangers over an insane game-winning touchdown, maybe. I remember going to B-Dubs when we were kids and just wanting wings, let alone going to watch a, a sports game or something. It's settled, Trav. You've convinced me. I know where I'll be watching all the games this season, right in the middle of my local B-dubs. All right now, 92 percenters, make sure you get to your favorite Buffalo Wild Wings location to see the games all season long. Out of the house! Get your ass out the house, Jason. That's right. Wait. It's time for our favorite segment, Out of the House. <laughs> our favorite segment. I wonder what we're going to talk about on this segment. We didn't have any games from this past week, so we obviously got to get out of the house. And I got out of the house and flew straight to Chicago. Shout out, baby. For Thursday night football. That's right. A little TNF. We went to Wiener Circle the night before with uh, Andrew Whitworth. The famous Shy town Wiener Circle. I got to say, I know that they get notoriety, I guess, for all the shit talking that happens in the Wiener Circle and like the, uh, the insults, like the comedy roasts that happen. It, 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 it takes attention away from how good them damn hot dogs are. I'm telling you, they were unbelievable. Have you been to Wiener Circle? Uh, no, I have not. I, I might have Dude. been in the area, but I definitely did not try any of those wieners. Do yourself a favor. They were, I mean, it was literally the best hot dog. I'm not e exaggerating here. They were incredible hot dogs. I think one of them might have been technically a Polish boy, but uh, it was uh, it was sensational Hot dogs, the cheese fries with real cheddar on them. Cheese fries. I haven't had cheese fries in forever. Poochie was awesome. Yeah, the ever the experience looked awesome. I would say uh you and Whitworth, <laughs> fucking good TV, man. You guys played off each other well. Uh as all do all O linemen. You guys are all kind of one and the same. Um, always here for a good time. But um honestly, I was um I thought Poochie was about to fucking just just rip you crush me right and just roast the shit out of you that's what they all told me and i was i was getting excited as you told her or called her michael strahan because of the gap in her teeth listen everyone told me when we were going there poochie is going to tear you to pieces so you and, decided well i looked through the window and i saw she had a little bit of a gap it's not as big as michael strahan's but it's a big gap and i was like <laughs> i'm gonna hit her with this one right away because you know ed kelsey you know you're gonna set the tone? they said you got to go back and forth like you get you got to have make it fun i'm like listen you know um, 
Yeah, Ed Kelsey always told me you got to be the first one to punt. In a street fight, ninety percent of the time, the person that hits first wins. So I went in swinging. <laughs> it's a fucking. That's a nonsense of a fucking stat. There's no I way. Don't, well, hey, Papa Kelsey, are you calling Papa Kelsey a, a liar? You calling Papa Kelsey a liar? No, I just don't know how many street fights he's been in where he's ever thrown the first punch. Dude, he's a, he's a bouncer a little bit. He, Dad's been in some bro- scuffles now. Scuffles. You reeled that back real quick. <laughs> Big Ed Kelsey. For a guy that preaches to start a fight first, is his his second rule is to kick a dude in the nuts. That is the one thing. I, well, Poochie didn't have nuts, so I had to go straight for the insult. I couldn't go kick to the nuts to start it. You don't know what Poochie had. That's a good point. You joined the booth, uh, Kirk Herbstreet and Al Michaels for the Bears Panthers game. A little NFL on Prime Video, baby. Yeah, baby. Man, you uh, you killed it, dude. You killed. It. I saw the uh, the pregame, uh, and then um, the second quarter when you went on, man. And uh, you obviously in this picture right here, you Al Michaels and Kurt are having a good old time, man. It was exciting. It was honestly, it was an unbelievable experience. Shout out to Amazon. Really, just honored that they let me do that and be a part of the broadcast. I mean, I know uh, the Chicago Bears Panthers, not the most exciting game. They're probably trying Whoa, to add why? a little. Don't be team shaming yeah. out here. Uh, that's, fair. That's, football, fair. That's, fair. that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. They made it easy. They made it super easy for me. It was basically just a bunch of interviews, answering questions. But it was awesome just seeing how everything operates, seeing uh, you know what the booth actually looks like, right? Like the different monitors. Like you got the tele. Uh, monitor right here where you can add the like uh, circles and lines on you got this monitor here that controls your replays you got this monitor which is what the people are seeing on at home you got your producer in your ear al has his producer in his ear and kirk and al's producers are like balancing between the two to figure out what happens dude this fucking sounds like chaos it, it was and then you go to the truck and you see all the people that are responsible for like the over 35 cameras, all the footage coming in, what's being shown, those producers in there. Damn. It was mind-blowing to see the operation that happens for a game and how seamless and um, professionally it all is done. It was it was really just uh, – it was, it was cool to watch and see. Like I can't Im- imagine the amount of data that is flowing through those trucks in a given game. Like the processing power, like if I'm making an iMovie on the laptop, if I get it longer than like 10 minutes, it starts to like glitch. <laughs> like, I can't imagine the bandwidth that is, uh, that these trucks yeah. are operating with. And they have a separate one for like the game feed versus the like uh, halftime show, like pre show, post show. It's, uh, man, it was something really incredible to watch and firsthand kind of see it you know what it felt like the closest thing it felt like was uh saturday night live but on a much different scale because there's more things that are uncontrollable but it was it, was, it kind of gave that same vibe of like holy cow man there are so many people involved in making this thing happen and having it be the product that it is so really really cool do you, f- do you think you could witness. do it you think do you want to do it do you, it does it look like something I don't you want to do i i don't i don't know i think um yeah you do i could do the the desk you know, pre post show, have an opinion on the teams and the games and stuff like that. I think any former player could do that. Like you just have like a opinion on not to like those guys are much better at it. And no, that was another thing. Like, yeah. That's not watching how they from bounce off they of do. each other and do all that. But like that part isn't that hard of like having an opinion on something. I think I do think the booth stuff, that's an art form that would take a long time to foster and try and be good at. Like Kirk was. He's he one was of the best to sitting do there having a conversation with me. He just like bull- he's just like yeah. So what are you going on? Oh okay. And I'm like what are you? Doing? You're not only are you having like a side conversation he's with a me pro, man. He's in between, then you're back here, then you're circling this, then you're Dude, rewinding, I mean, fast forwarding. He's like, had to have been doing this for almost twenty years, fifteen, twenty exactly. years now. You it, know it was it was. There ain't no flaws so, in that man's game. It was that's so he, crazy. That's how you got the job. It was so crazy how uh, seamless and effortless they both, both him and Al made it seem. I don't know how Al was asking me questions and then had third and seven from the, like, it's like <laughs> just right into it, man. Man, you are, you are on point. I can't even answer your questions and stay engaged in this. <laughs> What's happening? Um, so, um, no, it was well, very impressive. Yeah. Well, you made it everyone, uh, 
think that you definitely can do it because uh, I was talking to all my teammates and everybody around the building. They were all like, yeah, no, Jason seems like he's pretty set on what he can do after uh, football once it's over with. So you killed it. They also made you snap on your uh, your week off. Yeah, yeah, we had to, we were simulating what uh, Josh Dobbs had to go through in Minnesota the week before where brand new with a team just has to get up off the sideline and go win a game. Isn't it such a fucking wild situation? It's crazy. Who did that? Was that Baker that did it a couple years ago? He, I think he actually had some practice. He had like, it was two like only or three like days. a day. He got there on yeah. Thursday, I believe. That's what if I remember correctly with the Rams yeah. and then went out there and got the dub. That's right. Um, it not only got the dub, it was like a game winning drive. Yeah. Which like I it think was a two minute Dobbs situation well. that he had done. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, shout out to Josh Dobbs, but yeah, they, they wanted the visual of actually looking like what it felt like when you're trying to get used to another quarterback's cadence. Yeah. Or a new quarterback comes in. What do you initially do? And he fits mentioned that you immediately start taking snaps, but he, he made one mistake. He said, listen, I don't want to touch your grundle. Listen, okay. Ball security. Number one, you got to get up in there. You got to get that grundle. All if right, I don't feel up. your hand <laughs> on my grundle, I don't know where your hand's at. <laughs> that's the reality, dude. I, that's one of the things that's the actually becoming a, just out there. Seriously. Just, that's becoming a major issue with the college game because so much of the college game is played in shotgun. Shotgun, yeah. That when these quarterbacks come under, they like have their hand like barely touch. I'm like, bro, I need to feel Get some pressure. Thing. Like I need Get to know that where that hand's at, there. brother. <laughs> if I don't feel pressure, I have no I'm snapping to my ass. I need to know where the hand is. Touch it. Don't be scared. Don't be scared, son. Listen, if your knuckles, if your knuckles don't smell like some sweaty balls afterwards, then you're not doing it right. <laughs> You heard it. Come on, Fitz. Get up in there and don't be scared of that grunt. <laughs> Fitz wanted no part of that. He wanted no part. He was like, this dude just had some fucking chili cheese dogs. And fucking <laughs> he was at the wiener circle fries, last night. Yeah. Who yeah, knows what this what's happening under this. there? That fucking that gun is still hot. I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is fuming. <laughs> All right, and lastly, there were some 92 percenters in the crowd watching uh, Thursday Night Football. Um, did you encounter a lot of the podcast fans out in Chi-Town? Shout out to Chi-Town, man. That is one thing, not just in Chi-Town. The airport, like normally the Philly airport is a little rough for me because obviously a lot of people in Philadelphia know me. Chicago Air, it don't matter anymore. The 92 percenters apparently are everywhere. Um, it was bananas at the game. Everybody was fired up about it. We obviously got the picture here, the uh, new news sign that I had to go over and sign. But people were shouting at the whole game. They were into it. They were into the the broadcast, which was cool to see as well. And, of course, after the game, they were into it because they won the game. So that All made right it even now. more electric. Always good. I'll tell you what, man. Chicago is one of my favorite sports towns ever. Growing up, do you remember going to Chicago? So I kind of said this. I don't know if I said it on air but like, I feel like every Midwesterner's dream is to make it to Chicago. <laughs> it's like the yeah, it's the New York and LA of the Midwest. Yeah, exactly, big like city it's like, lights. I don't want to go too far. Man, if I can just make away. it to Chicago, I will have made it. It is a fucking awesome place, man. It's a beautiful city. Uh, it's it, I, whenever we went, it was just awesome. They used to have what did they they had that ESPN zone that we always went Dude, to. Dude, I I was just about to mention that man. Do you remember going to it as kids? Of course. There's yeah, a there's, it's like it. a it's yeah it's like a fucking it's like a museum for sports. Yeah, like, I don't even you know get if to it's have like fan interaction anymore. stuff. Yeah, I don't know if it is either, but I remember it had like the fan interaction stuff where you could like. I don't know, shoot free throws or shoot from like hot spots and then uh, basketball hot spots. And then you could, uh, you could get a hockey stick and try and score on like an, a simulated goalie or some, sh some shit like that. I forget exactly what it was, but Chicago's going to be so upset that we're talking about visiting their the city. ESPN zone. We're talking about the ESPN. I mean, we zone. did the whole like Sears Chicago. Tower, yeah. Uh, the whatever. parks. The, yeah. The we river. did, we did everything. What is that? Yeah, Lakeshore Boulevard. Uh, the chrome did. beam yeah, or yeah, bean. Yeah. We did all that shit. All that, was, we did all that extra stuff. We got some Luminati's and but uh, as a kid, Giordano's, Giordano's pizza. As um, a kid, all you remember is the uh, the ESPN zone. Yeah, exactly, you, exactly. Man, I just went there for the ESPN Man, there was just that. a 3D vision saw, in there. I was a saw Black Hawks hockey, man, at its yeah. finest, baby. Chelios and El Monte. I do enjoy it when those like iconic teams in hockey are good, right? Like there's something different when like the Blackhawks are good or the Red Wings are good, the Flyers are good. Flyers, yeah. The Maple Leafs, like when those teams are good, 
it it kind of brings a little because those fan bases man those fan bases are fucking awesome it's just ridiculous they'll get so behind it the bruins yeah Yeah. shout out to shout out to the 92 percenters showing jason love on thursday night football and congrats on everything man that was uh it was fun to see you in that light brother i appreciate it It was an honor to be there everyone was overly nice dude and like the whole crew everybody like took me under their wing and um you know it's it, it was impressive seeing how good and seamless all of them are at that. Everybody from all of the talent on air to the talent off air. So happy that I was able to uh, just be a part of it. Honored, really. Hell yeah. Our next partner is AG1. Being athletes like ourselves (laughs) takes a combination of hard work, dedication, and taking care of our bodies. Nutrition plays a huge role in this. AG1 is a game changer for anyone striving for peak performance. AG1 is an all-in-one daily nutritional drink that's packed with essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Tell the people why AG1 has become such a crucial part of Jason Kelsey's daily routine. That's right. AG1 is the supplement I use daily because it's designed to support my immune system, aid in digestion, and provide sustained energy throughout the day. And trust me, it works. This stuff is a nutritional powerhouse. And here's the best part. AG1 is made with real Whole food ingredients, no artificial preservatives, no added sugars, and it's gluten-free. Just pure, clean nutrition. Plus, it's super convenient. One scoop of AG1 mixed with water or your favorite beverage, and you're good to go. Favorite beverage, you say, huh? It's the perfect solution for hitting your foundational nutrition needs every day without overthinking it. AG1 is the supplement I trust to provide the support my body needs daily, and that's why they've been a partner for so long. If you want to start your day like Jason Kelsey, (laughs) start it with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash new heights. That's drinkag1.com slash new heights. Check it out. Shout out to another one of our sponsors. State Farm, that's right. State Farm helps you score an affordable price when you bundle home and auto insurance with the personal price plan. (laughs) The personal price plan lets you call the plays so you can choose the home and auto insurance coverage that fits your needs at a price you can afford. And bundling home and auto? Well, that's just a pro move and another way to save using the State Farm personal price plan. So talk to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with a personal price plan. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Prices are based on rating plans that vary by state. Coverage options are selected by the customer. Availability, amount of discounts and savings, and eligibility vary by state. All righty. Trav, we got to talk about it. You always start this with, we got to talk about it. <laughs> well, you never want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it, which I get. You want to keep what do you, your private what life private. What makes you think I don't want to talk about it? Because you want to keep your I private don't... life private. You've been on record as saying you want to keep your private life private. You're right. You're right. All I right? do. But this is right? not, this is public Well, this has been public. Knowledge. This is public. So we, I feel like it's. <laughs> this is, yeah. I can still keep that part private, but this is public. Yeah. I went down to Argentina and it was, uh, it was a whole bunch of fun, man. So you went down to Argentina. Yeah. I went south of the equator, which I've never been, never been south of the equator ever in my life. You've never been anywhere south of the equator? No. Wow. That's what I said when I got down there. Yeah. What was your biggest takeaway from Argentina? What, uh. You were there for what? Three days? Two days? Um, I was. I got Friday, there Saturday, Sunday. Friday, yeah, and left Sunday. Yep. Friday, Sunday. So I was there two nights. Yeah, got down there hoping that I was going to see Taylor's uh, first or I guess second uh, show, but it got it got rained out. Really, it got thunder and lightning out. It got postponed because um, the entire stage is a LED screen, so lightning and electronics don't mesh very well. Or water. Or water. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, there's a lot of things that aren't m- mirroring up very well. She didn't. She didn't. Sounds like a labyrinth of issues there. Labyrinth. <laughs> she uh, she wasn't too happy about it. Obviously, she uh, she kind of prides herself on performing through like weather or rain and things like that. But when it's unsafe to her and her her crew and everybody in the stadium, you got to do what you got to do. But it wasn't canceled. It was postponed. Um, as she uh, she noted. Um, and you know what? I think uh, everybody was accommodated for uh, whoever missed on Friday 
to go on Sunday. And uh, sure enough, I think it ended up being perfect. Everybody got everybody got to go. What goes into postponing a show? Like, I know it was a safety I mean, issue. Like, how, when did she know that it was going to be postponed? Like, she... It was like a couple of hours before... You're like waiting, they, they, hoping they, that the weather changes, hoping that yeah. it's like you get a window at some point to throw to put it on. Yeah, and then uh, and then you kind of get the expert in it all to tell you that it's probably best that we just postpone it because this was all outdoor. What what uh what was the venue? The stadium was unbelievable. I don't I forget what it was called. Is it like a soccer stadium? It looked like a soccer stadium. Yeah, and at, at what would be like at the ends of the field was like an entire like row of or entire like area of just like high like uh risers everybody was like standing room so it was instead of like people like having seats everybody just knew when they went to this event that they were going to be standing in that in that section how many people were there do you know i think it was north of 65 like seventy thousand. jesus three nights in a row <laughs> it's it's crazy how many how many uh sold out shows she has and these venues that she keeps going to yeah well, it's everywhere no i was blown away i was blown away it was an electric crowd too um and for everybody that went to those shows taylor was on record saying that it was one of her favorite places to play so hats off to you guys for showing the love it was uh it was fun man how does it feel to officially be uh the guy on the chiefs <laughs> you mean karma karma that's uh, right <laughs> Yeah, no, I had no clue that, uh, well, I might have had a little bit of a clue, but um, definitely when I heard it come out of her mouth, uh, still shocked me. And uh, Yeah, you could tell in the video. I was like, it was pretty. Oh, sh she really just said that. You were that. so All shocked right. you left Scott hanging. <sighs> Scott's over here looking for a high five. Yeah, Mr. Swift, I apologize, big guy. Oh, <laughs> man, I missed that. I never miss a high five, too. Big high five guy. It's the most electric thing you can do in a, at an event. And uh, so, sorry, Mr. Swift. He even had your Chiefs lanyard on. Got him onto over here to the good side, baby. Scott, you know what I'm saying? What are we doing, Scott? Just, just one by one, getting all the good, good ones. To you're come gonna, on you're over, gonna man. let this man's devilishly good looks and relationship with your daughter sway you from a <laughs> lifetime of fandom, Scott? This is ridiculous. Oh uh, man, I might have persuaded him at uh, at dinner the night before when I met him. No, did you? Uh, maybe. Who knows? He's a huge football guy. Is he? he um, yeah, he played college ball, uh, I believe a year at Hawaii and then uh, a year or two, or I forget how what long position? he was at Delaware, but I would think he was a linebacker linebacker turned center. He's pretty tall, isn't he? enough. Yeah, he's a tall guy, about 6'2". Yeah, you don't see I think that. It was, like I think he was linebacker turned center, or center and linebacker. He was a kind of dual we'll uh to get together and talk position. some center shop one day. All right, now. For those of you who haven't seen uh, all the videos of me um, on your TikTok and your Instagram feed, uh, I was enjoying myself down there in uh, in Buenos Aires. Um, the show was uh, even more electric, um, knowing that I had a, a little bit more to enjoy for. And um, yeah, Taylor absolutely ripped it. She killed it. And it looked like she was having some fun up there. Not right now. Can you hear that? Of course. Kids are going crazy. Those little monsters. What else did you do outside of just the show? Did you guys go out to eat? We got some good food, man. Had some empanadas and uh, and steak. They're big on uh, all the different beef cuts of meat. Yeah, got some nice. uh, got some good steak down there, man. Yeah, it was the first night I was there. Really, the uh, the only night we had a chance to go to dinner um, was the night the show the the show got postponed. So. We didn't want to just go and have a have a blast throughout the city like we didn't care about the show. So we um, we made sure we stayed in the hotel and kind of kept to ourselves, man. Well, I'll tell you what. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun watching it through social media take place. And it's a lot of fun seeing a look on your face. So I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Travis. All right now, brother. We've got to get you to a concert, man. See if you uh, you love I would some love good to live go. music, I would, man. I would love I'm telling to you, go. man, it'll, it'll blow you away. It'll absolutely blow you away, man. All right. Well. We got out the house. Jason went and decided to taste some hot dogs for his uh, getting out the house, and I decided to go south of the equator, both using our time very wisely. Hey, -oh. So let's keep this thing moving, ladies and gentlemen, to some no dumb questions. That's hey. right. It's time to answer a few not dumb questions because there's no such thing as dumb questions, just dumb people. That's right. No dumb questions brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go, sports bar. Oh, nice. nice. That was pretty oh. good. That was pretty good. From B. Holly from Boise. E. From Boise. 
From B Holly underscore from Boise. <laughs> we got new ninety two percenters in Boise. Yeah, dude, we're dude, the ninety two percenters are everywhere, man. How about that? Has to have no dumb questions. Forty eight hours in Kansas City question mark. I'm surprising. Sorry about that. I'm surprising my fourteen year old son, a diehard Chiefs fan, by taking him to the family reunion game. Ooh, Ooh, hopefully he does to take him to right Hopefully there. he doesn't watch the show, otherwise it won't be much of a surprise. All right now. <laughs> uh, we have never been to KC. What are the must do's in Kansas City if you're only there for forty eight hours? Uh, hey. Besides seeing the game, of course. Sincerely, a ninety-two percenter from Boise. Yeah, shout out you, Utah, Idaho. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. We are known as the city of fountains. That's right. We have more fountains than the city of Rome. Believe it or not, fountains. Yeah, big uh, fountains. So guy. definitely keep an eye out for all the beautiful What's fountains throughout fountain? the city. What's your favorite? Uh, fountain? Probably the one on the plaza during the playoffs. Oh, that is a good. They fountain. Uh, they get that thing going red. Fountain. Yeah, it is awesome. It is it is a beautiful. Uh, landmark in the city actually um when the when the royals are going are are up and running they um they get the uh they turn the water blue and then obviously when the chiefs are rolling which is all the time baby uh they keep that thing red so why the fountains casey is waterworks baby i don't know it's just got just, just always kind of been their thing i guess Big yeah fans of fountains aren't yeah. what uh yeah i mean i was gonna say go check out some barbecue i think that's like the the standard like yeah i mean i didn't get to that part yet but yeah we got oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, go boatloads and boatloads of barbecue so while yeah, you're I, checking I out the, the barbecue fountains, before the fountains the fountains are yeah right. man we barbecue. got i mean <laughs> you name it we got you can check out gates you can check out arthur bryant's i'm waiting you can check waiting. out slabs you can check out waiting, joe's which is one of my favorites that's the one right um q39 got some burnt ends down there it's all good. Ooh. Q39 is good. Jack Stack, classic yep, yep, yep. Kansas City barbecue right there. And then the, any anywhere that you see a barbecue sign, just go ahead and just go in the door and get you some little taste test. Yeah, you can't go. You really can't go wrong. I will say there's just something about the Joe's in the gas station that like. It's authentic, man. Yeah. It feels it just, authentic. Like, it feels, I don't even know if you can pump gas in that gas station anymore. Who cares? But, uh, it's like the yeah. visual, the people there. Damn, that's good. It's, it's Dude, so it is good. good. You're making my mouth water. I might go get some right now. And then outside of that, um, check out something like maybe the artsy districts. I always thought that that was a very cool uh, part of Kansas City and not really heard about as much as uh, everything going on in the crossroads. Um, there's a there's a big music scene out here. When you were in town, we went to the uh, Barcade. Dude, I mean, listen, you want to have a good time. I don't know how old, uh, 14-year-old. Uh, I, mean, I don't know if they let under 21s nah, in there. No, probably but. not. Probably I not. mean, get him a good fake oh, ID. Might. You they guys could have yeah. some good good times. Yeah. Have, have like quarter beers and play Blitz the entire night. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we, the best we, were, uh, we were fucking unstoppable. It was like a <laughs> Blitz was... hang time like uh, combo. And well, me one and of Jason... the things of Blitz, when you can play with two people and you can let one person get Four, after the yeah. quarterback and the next person just kind of. Play like, safety. Just yes. fucking decletes everybody. It can be just uh, like unstoppable. Like, it's electric. You know, it's like. Um, our childhood is what it is. <laughs> All right. What it was, what else? Um, yeah, I mean, that's 48 hours right there for you. I, we just gave you everything you could possibly do in Kansas city in 48 hours. Is there like, so like in Philly, there's like a double decker bus tour that I always recommend people go to because you can kind of hit everything. Yeah. You're getting a lot of American history in that thing. I would say there's definitely uh bus tours in Kansas city. Okay. Maybe not like a double decker bus, but you could definitely get a bus tour or, or something like that um, yeah. going. Or you could just go to the things I just told you about and oh, there you basically go. get the bus tour yourself. Just be the bus. Be this be the bus, B Holly. <laughs> <laughs> From Sophie McCaffrey on Twitter, Thanksgiving dinner with or without the Christmas tree up. Christmas yeah. music playing before or after Thanksgiving. Uh so the question is, I guess, do you have the Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving, and I'm gonna say no, you don't. Yeah, I'm. A, I don't. I don't think we those never. Things I don't think we a, ever had it up when we were growing up before. Yeah, I remember it. Right? It was. It, we always did it either the day after Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving yeah. after dinner. I think it's nice to have the Christmas tree up for Thanksgiving. Just gonna put that mm -hmm. out there. I do think Thanksgiving. Two completely different holidays. They are completely different, but with having everybody there, it's a nice visual to have the Christmas tree. I think. No, because then it feels like Christmas dinner. Yeah, but Thanksgiving is like the first time that you're like kicking off for Christmas after that dinner. 
No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm just saying. That's the way I feel. You're trying to mesh the two. Like, it's like a kickoff party to like an event. It is. That's why the next day is Black Friday. It's the number one hop shopped uh, holiday for Christmas. No, no way. No way. That's why it's no way. That's why it is. It's right no, after Black Thanksgiving. Black Friday and, is the kickoff boom. then. Yeah, Black Friday. But I'm saying having the Christmas tree there to symbolize that it's starting the next day. I do think Christmas music has to be either on Thanksgiving or after. I'd preferably after. I don't think Christmas music on Thanksgiving Day, that's the exact a little bit off. same thing. The Christmas now, tree the and tree Christmas music are the though. exact the same different. things. The tree is just a visual thing. It's pretty. It's nice when you have all your family members there eating and the trees in the background. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm pro Christmas tree, which I've never, uh, been organized to get done before Thanksgiving or on Thanksgiving. This guy is so, uh, so it's never happened, but so I he's can, never actually head, done this, ladies and gentlemen. He's just in his head. He's not against. Well, it. I've never thought about it, but in, I, I'm just thinking about it right now, and I'm kind of pro Christmas tree no, at Thanksgiving. You've never done it, so it doesn't fucking count. Well, it, it might. Maybe we do it this year. No, it won't happen. It might be nice. No, nope, I don't believe you're going to do it. All well, right. you heard uh, you heard our dumbasses talking about <laughs> that, that yeah, subject. I guess for that's a, our opinion on that. Shout out to Sophie. Make sure you uh, check out our Christmas song tomorrow <laughs> today. <laughs> and for the last one, Nina Grenken, Greken, via email. She sent this one on the email. Via email. She's still using email? I feel like such a jabroni for asking something that only a jamoke would ask, but <laughs> clearly a 92 percenter. I have a no dumb question. What is, quote unquote, buns? Oh, no. Why is, quote unquote, buns a negative like a buns number yeah well yeah. there's buns is you know. well it's ass is what yeah, it's it is it's it's, it's 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 cheeks booty it's, cheeks uh, yeah it's there's nothing good that comes out of your booty all right it's all exit it's all waste back there that's so right that's right you already know that shit's I'll, I'll, ass so is what it I, is so i actually took a study of language class in college nina and i'm going to explain to you why language evolves and changes. So <laughs> the way it. this statement could be reworded would be instead of it being a buns number is that's a shit number, right? So it's a shit number, meaning it's a bad number. Okay. Well, what else? Where does shit come from? Well, shit comes from ass. It goes in your booty. So it's an ass number. So it's it's a shit number. It's an ass number. It's a bad number. Oh, what else is ass? It's cheeks. Oh, cheeks so it's a is cheeks another number. One. That shit it's is a, cheeks. It's an ass number. What what else is cheeks? Buns. So you just kind of you got to follow the order of operations in which yeah. like okay, what are buns referring to? Okay, in this context, it's calling the number shit. It's a it's a whack number. Yeah, it's stupid. It's bad. Yeah. That was no dumb questions brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Let's go sports bar. The holidays are here and our sponsor True Classics is ready for it. It's time to break out my favorite jeans, t-shirts, and sweaters from True Classics. Speaking of the holidays, 92 percenters, True Classics ultra comfortable, perfect fitting essentials make for the perfect gift for the guys on your shopping list this year. And right now, for a limited time this November, they're giving our listeners a special Black Friday deal all month long. Up to 60% off site-wide at trueclassics.com slash new heights. I can't wait to use this deal. That's a good deal. That's a fucking great deal. True Classics completely re-engineered how t-shirts fit. They're tighter around the arms, chest, and shoulders, and have that looser fit in the torso. All right mm, now. Just like Sounds I like mean. dad bod material right there. <laughs> Plus, when it comes to uh, sweatshirts, their hoodies and crews will become your go-to for casual Fridays, game days, and trips to the gym. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with our exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash new heights and save up to 60% off site-wide during their November holiday sale. End the year with holiday cheer, thanks to True Classic. All right, it's time to shout out one of our awesome sponsors we've talked to you guys about before, and that's the new Experience Smart Money Debit Card and Digital Checking Account. The holidays are fast approaching 92 percenters, and everyone knows that even though it's the most wonderful time of year, it's also the most expensive time of the year. Not right now. Hey. And uh, this is where Experience Smart Money Accounts early paycheck access feature comes in. If you don't already know about this great feature, it means you could get your paycheck up to two days early when you set it up with direct deposit. 
Early paycheck access is also great because it's available year round, not just for the holidays. Yeah. Dude, I mean, that would have been really nice when we were in college and I was trying to get you a holiday gift. Yeah, I think um, this could definitely uh, have paid off really big when I had <laughs> zero money. <laughs> yeah. You could say that again. And for all the 92 percenters out there who haven't already signed up, getting started with your Experience Smart Money account is fast and easy. You can get it set up in minutes. The Experience Smart Money account also has no monthly fees, no setup fees, and no account minimums. There you go. To get your Experience Smart Money debit card with a digital checking account, go to Experian.com slash Kelsey. Experian is not a bank. Direct deposit up to two days earlier is not guaranteed and takes effect after two pay periods. Okay. You can see terms at Experian.com slash legal. Let's get to some uh, player insights on NFL storylines, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. Uh, the old yeah. Week 10 roundup. On Sunday, there were five games that had game-winning field goals as the time expired, the most on a single day in NFL history. How about that? Um, yeah, that's pretty uh, That's pretty wild. The Browns pulled off the upset in the big divisional matchup against the Ravens, uh, one on a walk-off 40-yard field goal, 33-31. to Believe Lind. Finding a nice. way to get a huge division brownies. win. Yeah, the Ravens have been absolutely rolling teams too. They've been, so dude, they've been that's a huge. Win. And it was a comeback win, man. They were I think they were down two scores going into the fourth. It's the second division. There's something about division games, especially in the AFC North. That conference is stacked right now, and the team, like I think the Steelers already beat them once. I think Cleveland. This is their second time playing them, and they played them tight the first time. They're all just beating each other up over there, man. I have no idea who's going to come out of that division. Yeah. Right now, the, the AFC is absolutely rocking right now. The Texans won on a last-second field goal as they got a huge win over the Bengals. Yeah, who have been red Man. hot. Yeah. Coming with, off a of four-game uh, straight, just beating the uh, 49ers last week, right? Yeah. Bengals? Or was that two weeks ago? Pretty convincingly. Either way, the, that was yeah. that was definitely one of their big-time wins. Rookie C.J. Stroud, the Stroud boys, man. Oh, Dude. baby. Threw for Stroud another proud. big game. I tell you what, man. 356, <laughs> one tutty, one interception. He might – not only be in the lead for the rookie MVP, but he might he might be up there for the league MVP right now. I mean, if you look at his stats, he's right up there with all the other quarterbacks. The stats and, I mean, if you look at what the Texans uh, kind of have been on paper. What are you trying to say? Coming into this season, they were not highly anticipated to be doing what they're doing right now. And it was because they had a young quarterback that they didn't know who what he was going to do. And sure enough, CJ's showing that he is, that, he is the real deal, man. He is. He's, I see what you just tried. Right you now. tried to just make me shit on fucking the Texans. But I you did. was not. Yeah, you I did was a good not. job. You, you navigated it perfectly. Not right now. Uh, Lions beat the Chargers in a high-scoring game that uh, came down to Lions kicker <laughs> Riley Patterson. Nails a nice. 41-yard field goal with two seconds left. Lions now 7-2. and two. That's right. Just their third time in team history with a 7-2 and two start in the last 60 seasons. Holy shit. The Dirty D getting it done. It's cold in Detroit, that, boy. Yeah, man. Cardinals got their second win of the season in Kyler Murray's return. Um, man, that dude, you forget how electric that dude is. Have you seen any of the highlights from, from that game? I have not. Did not watch a single one. Dude, he he had a he had a like a fourth quarter scramble around and get the first down that just looked deflating uh to the to the other team's defense. I mean, I don't know. It's uh when that when he's running around, it's just like he's always just out of reach of everybody. You know what I mean? Like it's just like his feet are moving faster than everybody. I mean, he's got the quick feet for sure, for darn sure. Yeah. Somebody said it, he looks like a little badass kid out there running around it, with the ball it, in his hands. I think that's a pretty accurate. <laughs> I, I would say that's accurate. Yeah, but it's good to see Kyler uh, <laughs> back out there slinging the rock for the Cardinals, man. Um, and for lastly, sure. the Seahawks took down the Commanders. Uh, this was the one that I was watching. As time it expired. was close all the way down to the wire. Yeah. yeah. Kicker Jason Myers, man. 43-yard field goal. Sam Howell. Freaking dude. This dude is balling, man. He is a baller, man. Two-minute fourth quarter drive. I thought he let it down to tie it up. I thought it was going to be some OT, a little free football. Who doesn't like that? But not on Geno and the Seahawks watch. I mean, was, I mean, dude. They didn't have much time left. I think they would have had 50 seconds there to put together a field goal drive and got it done. Dude, if it wasn't a Geno Smith, I might still be a quarterback, man. Oh. <laughs> uh, we also got a couple blowouts uh, throughout uh, week 
what is it, week 10? The 49ers beat the Jaguars pretty good. That was a surprising game uh, to me, at least. The Jags have been, I mean, I think they were tied with you guys for the best record in the AFC. No, so, they, were, they were, and they were playing some damn good football. Yeah. Chase Strong proved to be just uh, as big of an asset as everyone predicted. Um as he teamed up with his ex-Ohio State teammate, Nick Bosa. All right, now 49ers snapped their three-game losing streak by uh, by putting a good beating on the Jaguars. Yep. Cowboys beat the Giants and didn't just beat them. Uh, ran it up on them, man. 49-17. to 17. Almost a 50 ball. The boys love beating the shit out of the Giants. All right, now. <laughs> Shout out to the Giants, man. I know it ain't too hot over there. And uh, I was just reading what uh, Brandon, our intern, intern Brandon, on here. Made, yeah, made that was not that. my words. Intern Brandon made me say that. Intern Brandon made me say that. I am Ron Burgundy. <laughs> so a lot going on in week 10, man. A lot of a lot of weird shit going on in week 10. I am surprised that like only five game-winning field goals is the record for the most like. I don't think it's just game-winning field goals. I think it's game-winning field goals as time expires. So these are all walk-off field goals, if I'm not mistaken. I think yeah. that's why it's unique. Yeah. Well, I mean, five. It's a lot. Of, how many games are played every week? Like 10, well, 12? 32 teams, so at max, but four, at this 16 team, Four games. teams are getting – And four, four teams, teams are getting, getting buys, buys, so there's 14 12, games? 12, 14, yeah. Does that sound right? Mm-mm. Like 10 to, 10 to 12. I think it's 14. If four teams get a buy each week. That means there's 28 teams left. Divide that by two is 14. So there's 14 right. games each week. So it's 14 games each week. Five or field goals. Right now. Right, I guess I'll give them that. Whatever. And that's cheers to Cleveland Heights math. <laughs> we also had a nice little uh, thick six almost with uh, Tristan Wirfs almost Ooh, scooping and scoring. Big man. Let's take a look at this clip. Who doesn't love somebody running with the ball that shouldn't be running with the ball? Bayfield steps oh, up. Yeah. Look, oh, look at Bayfield. Oh, hey. oh no, falls out. Oh, look at the big man. Rumbling, bumbling. Give me this. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Break a tackle. Break a tackle. Oh. Time out. Brandon, you made this sound like he was close to scoring a touchdown. He got tackled at the 40. What are we playing this for? <laughs> Didn't he make it sound like he almost scored a touchdown? I mean, you just made it sound like that while reading it, for sure. Yeah, well, I never. I just saw the clip. It's impressive. It's impressive. No, and honestly, to see a big dude like that scoop scoop the ball off the ground, that is impressive. While he's breaking a tackler or eluding a tackler or somebody diving at his legs, that was impressive. I'll give you that. It was impressive. He was nowhere near getting a score. <laughs> I mean, he's at the 40-yard line, and he's 300 pounds. He's not like, yeah. All right, well, do you guys even allow... Like for us, we're taught as offensive linemen. Don't scoop it. Do not just jump it. on it. Just jump on it. They don't want guys with a bunch of tape on their hand carrying a football. Yeah. No, I would assume that's that's what it's taught in the O line room. Yeah. Well, I can guarantee you this. If I get a chance to scoop it, I'm scooping. <laughs> <laughs> There's been a few times. There's been a few times. I got the Travis Kelsey hurdling jeans. Like if I get an opportunity, I'm picking that sucker up. <laughs> dude, I think one time you spun on somebody, dude. I think I saw you pick the ball up and spun it. Like, oh, damn, the spins up, boys. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah. I think it got called back or something, but. Yeah, the DB got on me so quick. I was not ready for outfit. I, I was going to like, I'm going to stiff arm. <laughs> <laughs> dude, they get on you quick, man. But I, I broke them off. You get, I, man. I shed them off. Got a couple okay, positive boy. yards. Gave him the shimmy, the, the, the thick shimmy. The thick shimmy. Uh, in other news from uh, week 10, Giants quarterback <laughs> Tommy DeVito. The thick shimmy. St- <laughs> That's a good one. Giants quarterback Tommy DeVito still lives with his mom at home. God damn it, Tommy. That's right. And talking to ESPN earlier in the week, Tommy DeVito revealed he still lives at home. Um, I don't have to worry about laundry, what I'm eating for dinner, chicken cutlets, and all that is waiting for me. All that is waiting for me when I get there. My mom still makes my bed. Everything is handled for me. Honestly, I don't even know if I could find a place closer to here than where I live. It makes it takes about twelve minutes to get here. Oh, nice! I don't blame Tommy for this. I blame Mrs. Devito. <laughs> what are we doing? I get his ass. You have a full house. grown ass son. You playing have a in the job NFL. making Come on. six figures. Come you on, are, Mrs. Devito. You have plenty of reason you, to get out of your fucking yeah. mom's house. What are we doing God here? Damn it! Take the chicken cutlets to him. <laughs> You can bring them. They make pans for the shit. <laughs> they make, yeah. yeah. Give them heating instructions. 
He can come home, eat, and then go home. He's a grown man now. Come on, Tommy. Listen, be a grown man, have your own place, and don't do your laundry. Be live in filth <laughs> like the rest of us. <laughs> don't get your bed made. What yeah. you? Who are you? This is ridiculous. This is. This, I will I mean, say it's pretty cool that he grew up in a house right next to where he works now. Yeah, I think awesome. that's. I think that's pretty fucking cool. It's got to be awesome playing for your hometown. Like you grew up that far away from a stadium, and all of a sudden you're playing at that stadium. That's got to be ridiculous. That's got to be fucking sweet. This does sound more like a Jets quarterback though than a Giants quarterback. Than a Giants. <laughs> right. It, I don't know why, like, but it does. Yeah. I don't. I feel just what you're judging off of fan bases. <laughs> yeah. For whatever reason, when he said his mom's fucking cooking up ricotta, it was like, Gosh. all right, that's a Jets bomb right there. Fuck yeah! Oh, holy shit! J E T S. Oh my gosh! Do you think mom and dad would have let us live at home? I think mom probably. Nah, I don't know. What do you think? I'm not even letting. I'm not even letting them make that decision. I was that's trying to get out of the house when I was in fucking middle school. I mean, I love mom's cooking. I'll take mom's cooking. I'll stop by and grab dinner. I took my laundry home a couple of times when I was at Cincinnati. <laughs> Dude, we're not talking college. We're talking know, NFL this here. Is a whole this is level. further. This is further along. But hey, you know what? To to each his own. It sounds like he's got quite the system uh, in place. He's living his dream. He's getting taken care of. I mean, getting good, healthy, home cooked meals every night. Getting his bed made, you know what? Hats off, man. If that's how you want to, that's how that's how you want to live it, baby. It's working for him. Keep the family tight, man. Keep the family tight. I feel like he's missing out. He's missing out on living life, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't even think you should live by yourself when you're a rookie. You should be living with <sighs> other. You should be having roommates. Roommates, right? yeah, yeah. You, you should. Need, you need some roommates. Just you need out to here like, creating distractions. You need to be really cohabitating, testing, not cohabitating test. with your parents. Like cohabitating <laughs> with people that grew up with a different way of thinking in life. And ooh, I like that. I'm with you that. You know what I mean? This is the Thank time you. to live with a guy that pisses all over the toilet seat, and then he's got to learn that he shouldn't do that. <laughs> he could have learned that in college too. <laughs> my my first couple of years, I had my uh my guy Eric Jones, baby A Jones. Yeah. We were roommates uh, for the first couple of years, and um, yeah, man, it was a fucking blast, man. We lived in a <laughs> loft down in the uh the board of trade lofts. Created yeah. a Snapchat actually called the uh, the Loft Boys. That's right. It got a little yeah. We ended up getting like close to like 15 20 000 followers of that thing um and then uh i got banned <laughs> from from doing it got a the content got a little explicit you know what i'm saying <laughs> it, got, it got a little out of control so but yeah no the loft boys it was a legendary combo and still a legendary combo shout out to a jones man there's a lot of personal growth that happens when you start living with other people and you realize that not everybody was raised or, or does things like, and I'm one of the, listen, you are talking to two of the biggest slobs of all time. How you doing guys? That's us. We're two dumbass slobs, but we didn't know that until we started living with other people. <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> you like, gotta, this you know is I mean? normal. Like, what are we talking about here? Why would I do? <laughs> it's a time for, for education to happen. Get them cutlets on the side. Get a, Learn out, learn about yourself. Learn about other people. See what someone else's cutlets taste like, man. Yeah. You might be missing out. All right now. Tommy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's what you won't be Thomas until he moves out of the house. Yeah. He's Tommy until he lives out of the house and he's Thomas. That's we great. can't keep taking shit. We De DeVito, man, more power to you, dog. What you got going is working, man. Shout out to the DeVito family. That's right. For Especially mom. Raising an NFL stud, Dude, huh? Mom, especially mom. Mom's fucking killing it. Doing a lot of work here. Yeah, obviously we're having fun with it, though. Let's keep this thing moving. New Heights Stamp of the Week. All right, now let's hand out some stamps to, to guys or girls or whoever that we think is taking their game to New Heights. Yeah, baby. Stamp of the Week is sponsored by State Farm. Hey, Talk yo. to a State Farm agent today to learn how you can bundle and save with the personal price plan. Like a good neighbor. State Farm is there. That's nice. That was, I think you were right on pitch. Just you're like Connor. You're just fucking blowing smoke. No, man. Well, I'll start it off since you never know who to give your new height stamp to. I'm keeping it in the tight end room, baby. Another Shocker. absolute dog. You tight ends. You guys are just like all in cahoots together. I just fucking killed a fly with my behind. That's dude. Is there anything more exciting than when you get them? <laughs> or you, or you <laughs> grab them out of the air? I did. 
You just feel him. Mr. Miyagi him. Ah! All right. Tight end. Who you got? Oh, nice. I'm going to keep it in the tight end room, baby. All right. Keeping it, keeping it real tight. Mm. Tight end Michael Mayer. That's right. The Golden Domer uh, in his rookie season just scored his first touchdown on Sunday night football. Mm. <laughs> God, that's, electric. that's a good feeling right there. It's a good time to score a touchdown. In a win against the Jets. That's right. The Raiders got the dub 16-12. to 12, And uh, Mayer's TD was the only touchdown of the game. That's right. And he went, he climbed the ladder, went up top and dunked on a dude in the end zone. And um, damn, that's an exciting way to get your first touchdown, just making a play. Uh, quarterback said, you know what? I like my one on one matchup with my big fella. I'm going to go ahead and put it up. We're going to take this. We're going to take this. And that's what Michael did. So shout out to the Golden Domer. Congrats on your first touchdown, brother, and taking your game to new heights. Jason, who's your pick? My pick of the week is the Gronk Skydive. That's right. For Veterans Day. Fox Sports did its show from the Air Force Academy, which is awesome. I think everybody loves the Air Force. Uh, and Gronk was a part of a skydiving segment from 11,000 feet. No chance in hell am I getting up there and skydiving. Gronkowski said he needed a nudge from his uh, tandem partner before leaving the plane. After three taps or so, Gronk was off and he safely landed. Let's check out this video. Yeah, I just want to see um, this. Gronk. Has All right, yep, that's him landing. Oh, nice! And then he got the did the Gronk spike. Nice in typical Gronk fashion. I mean, dude, just zero percent chance. I'm interested in doing this. I might do it in a situation like this, where I'm with a bunch of Air Force guys, and I got the patriotism coursing through my veins. That might be <laughs> enough to get me just geared up and freaking try something out. But man, I, uh, I I just don't know why people do it for fun or are excited to. It's like riding a roller coaster. Nah, but this is different. This is weird. This is you're 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 on a parachute, uh, free falling to the earth. It's all the same. You got a harness. I feel like roller coasters are a lot safer. I don't know what the stats. See, I want to do it, but I just I, I I there's a trust factor of like doing it tandem. Dude, I do it in a heartbeat. I just don't want to. I just don't want to trust somebody else for pulling the shoot. I want to do it. I want to do everything. Well, you might be able to pull it, but they might just put somebody with you in case you fuck it up. I don't want anybody's nuts on my back. Nobody? Are they on the back? I thought it was face to face. Like you're hugging them. <laughs> no, it's clearly if you watch the video. <laughs> Should we talk about uh, Grandpa Kelsey in uh, World War I? <laughs> so our, gra- our grandfather. That had to be World War II, right? Not World War II, sorry, my bad. I'm, yeah. I, we were talking about the World War One monument earlier. The side check. Memorial, Anyways, yeah. our, our grandfather. Oh my gosh! What is Grandpa Kelsey's? Name? We never met him because, unfortunately, he passed away before we were born. Was it not Theodore? Was that Theodore or Kelsey? Is it Theodore? Damn, we should know this, man. I know this is embarrassing. We suck. I don't think it was Theodore. What was it? I'm gonna text Dad. What was your dad's name? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. I thought they th- they called. No. It's not Tom. Was it Ed? Right? Tommy. Was it no. Ed? It was not Ed. Was it Michael? It might have been Michael. It might have been Michael because he, want, he I don't wanted think it was to Michael. name. I think that that was one of his cousins. Was my, I think, or maybe. Maybe his grandfather his was uncle. Michael. I know Michael is a common name in the family. Was it Daniel? Is that what my middle name? No, it wasn't mm-hmm. Daniel. No, it wasn't Danielle. Let's see how fast Ed is. He's doing nothing. He should be quick with the response. <laughs> You don't know what he's doing, man. You're right. I have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> hey, what's up? Hey, what's your dad's name? Oh, uh, Willis. Willis. Mm. Man, we were way How off. The but they called him Ted. Forget they did Willis. call him Ted, though, right? They called him Ted? No, not at they all. Called they called him Bill. Dad, Ted. No, they called him Will. We know they called you Ted. They called him Bill. They called me Ted. They called him Bill. That was it. Bill. Slick Willie. Bill Kelsey. God, I forgot about that. And that's such a good name. That's a strong name. That's a strong Bill Kelsey. Isn't it? Mom would uh, would refer to Travis as Little Bill. Mom would refer to Travis as Little Bill? Yes. Hey. Little Travis Wild Bill? Is really, uh, yeah. Just, <laughs> she just said Little Bill. Just Little Bill? All right. Yes. Oh, shit. So... Yes, Willis Gerald Kelsey. All right, Gerald. You guys doing your podcast now? Here we are. We're, we're doing that. We just got done. We were talking about uh, Gronk went skydiving. We were talking about the three times that uh, Grandpa had to jump out of the plane in World War Two. I think he only he jumped out. 
twice, right? Twice, yeah. And then the third time he said, I'm going down with the plane? Yeah. 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 True Kelsey fashion. (laughs) Fuck, fuck. It's safer in this thing than jumping out. And the pilot, who was a guy in in Houston. Yeah. Well, a guy from Houston. I can't remember his last name now. Yeah. But he was also, his name was Bill. uh, The two Bills. Yeah. said, fuck it, we're not jumping out of this plane again. Not jumping out of the plane. Did he get the Purple Heart in the plane or jumping out? He got the Purple Heart for getting shot in the ass. I know, but what did, did, <laughs> we know. But did he get it when he was parachuting down, or did he get that when he was in the plane still? I think they got it. I think he got it in the plane. In the plane? Yeah. Yeah. All right. We had the story. World War II? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know that for sure. Yeah, then he got, he got shot in the arm. I don't know if he got two Purple Hearts out of it. I remember the one. I didn't see a second Purple Heart. Well, Dad, don't you have the box of Purple Hearts? Right. Travis said, do you, have the bo- do you still have the box of Purple Hearts? I've got metal. I, I just ran across some metals. I'm starting to go through a lot of the shit downstairs and separate memorabilia that some is yours, some for you, and some for Travis. This sounds like you when I just asked you if you had my jersey that we swapped. It's It's got to be down there somewhere. <laughs> As long as you have your house and your and your your man cave, you know what I mean. You might enjoy some of this stuff. So, are the purple hearts down there? Yeah, there, there is a purple heart down there. There may be two, but one of them may be my uncle Ed's. Oh, oh I got you, Uncle right. Ed. That's what fucked me up, Uncle right. Ed. Well, they called my uncle Ed Ted too, but his name was Edward Theodore. Yes. My name was Edward Michael. Yep. I at least knew My dad something. My insisted Ted was a nickname for Edward. Yep. Was Ted Kennedy. Yeah, that sounds like a Kelsey thing. Slick Willie. He's also Edward Theodore. Yeah. That sounds like a Kelsey thing. All right. Well, um, good talking to you. Hope, right. hope, hope you're doing good. Yeah, I got your machine. I was going to bring it over, and I thought, you know, the way this week is you guys could be doing the podcast tonight instead of tomorrow. We're doing it right now. You're on the podcast. Okay. All right, well. Then um, talk to you tomorrow. I love you. (laughs) Love you. Bye-bye. All right. Well, Slick Willie it is. Got to have Dad move in with uh, Mrs. DeVito so he knows where his purple hearts are. (laughs) 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 All right. Either way. Our grandfather served in World War II, and this is before there was an Air Force, but he was on uh, the planes, uh, some of the bombers and everything that were um, overseas, and his plane was shot down three times. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. His plane was shot down three times. Yeah, I couldn't avoid a bullet, man. The first time it was shot down, he jumped out of the plane with the rest of his uh, crew, and they parachuted to safety. The second time it got shot down, he refused to jump and was not... He was so terrified of jumping out of the plane again that one of his uh, uh, crew members had to grab him and throw him out of the plane... (laughs) This dude's like, listen, man, at least if I'm in here, I got something between me and these bullets flying past me. Yeah, He's like, dude, yeah. you jump out there, this bullet's just, pew, 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 pew. Says, bro, that's probably a fucked situation to be in, man. And the third time, he, uh, in true uh, Kelsey fashion, he strapped himself in with a seatbelt and decided to go down with the plane. And somehow they landed that sucker. Fuck yeah. He refused to jump out of it. Yeah, I think... Um, you got a that's purple not heart, a Kelsey man. move. I don't know what it is. But yeah, I ever heart. since hearing about how much Grandpa Kelsey did not want to jump out of that plane, I've never been in the mood <laughs> to go skydiving ever. Hey, man. So it'll get you a purple heart, baby. Well, he had the purple heart in the plane when they were shooting up. The plane went, the bullet went through the, the floor into his ass. Yeah. Right in the cheeks. Shout out to all the veterans. Um, and shout out to Gronk. And Gronk. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations uh, in quite literally taking your game to new heights, baby. 11,000 feet. That had to be a fun fall. All right now. That wraps up this episode of New Heights. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube to the New Heights channel so you know when all the new episodes are coming out. Make sure to check out our bonus video this Friday. We're going to do uh, some more No Dumb Questions as well as check out some new fan art. Finally, we'll also preview, I guess, an uh, 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 anticipated game this week, uh, Eagles Chiefs, and a little family reunion. The family reunion game. Again, we've never had a family reunion. Well, the family would definitely be there in attendance. Is everybody going? Everyone, but maybe Aunt Judy again. We got to get Aunt Judy going. Yeah, I talked to her this weekend. It's really tough. 
Not feeling it. One of these days. She's lifing. She's out there lifing. Love you, Aunt Judy. Also, make sure you listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. All right, now, once again, New Heights is presented by Wave Sports and Entertainment. And this episode has been presented by the all-new Experian Smart Money Debit Card. The debit card that builds credit without the debt. Follow the show on all social media at New Heights Show with one S. Thanks to our production and crew for always making us look good <laughs> right now. And thank you to the 92 percenters for tuning in. We'll see you after this family reunion, baby. Peace. I can't sing. I'll do karaoke and be funny about it. I would never do it seriously. Casey and Jojo. Casey and Jojo. That's not the song I would pick. That's I not the song? I sing. can't sing baby, that. Baby, 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 ba